Good morning, Ask for Church family. God bless you. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for being present in our lives. Holy Spirit, living breath of God, breathe new life into my willing soul. of the risen Lord to renew my heart and make me whole. Cause the word to come alive in me. Give me faith for what I can Give me passion for your purity, Holy Spirit, breathe new life in me. Holy Spirit, from creation's birth, giving life to all that God has made. Show your power once again on earth, cause your church to hunger for your ways. Let the fragrance of our prayers arise. Lead us on the road to sacrifice. That in unity the face of Christ will be clear for all the world to see. It's time for today's message. We're launching a seven-part sermon series today, Living Proof. Today's message is entitled, Watermarked for Good. So last Sunday, we celebrated Epiphany Sunday. The actual day of Epiphany is January the 6th. That's the 12th day after Christmas. So one of the things we talked about was that the season of Epiphany had some significance in meaning. What does Epiphany represent? So if Advent is a season of anticipation and preparation, then the season of Epiphany is about demonstration. It's about being the living proof of the power and the presence of God dwelling in and through us. God with us. Emmanuel, now what? So it's my hope that we answer the now what. It's my hope that this sermon series will help you and me to become more aware of the presence and power of God in our lives and that we will begin to or continue to live out the truth of who God says we are. God says we are blessed and not cursed. I don't know about you, but I am going to claim the blessing. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you for the opportunity to serve. I thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to come before your people to proclaim your word. Now may the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart be acceptable unto you, O Lord, my God, my Redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen. So our backdrop for the message today is Matthew, the third chapter, verses 13 through 17, and it reads as follows. Then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. 
And John tried to prevent him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and you're coming to me? But Jesus answered and said to him, Permit it to be so now, for thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he allowed him. When he had been baptized, Jesus came up immediately from the water. And behold, the heavens were open to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting upon him. And suddenly a voice came from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. The Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You know, a lot of people read this passage, and the very first question that they ask, and I ask myself, is, why did Jesus feel the need to be baptized? I mean, John the Baptist was calling people to repent of their sins and to turn to God. Well, it just doesn't seem like being baptized was something Jesus the Christ, our Lord and Savior, needed to do. Why would our sinless Savior insist that he be baptized? Great question. I'm glad you asked it. Because... It wasn't about repentance for Jesus. It wasn't about repentance. It was about activation, initiation, validation, and obedience. Jesus was activating his public ministry. He was declaring that it was go time, go time for him. You know, we hadn't heard much from a Jesus since the Magi showed up when he was just a little toddler. Hadn't heard much from him at all. But he's now 30 years of age, according to Luke 3.23. And 30 is an important age for a Jewish male in Jesus' day. 30 was considered the age of full maturity. When you're 30 uh, and you're a Jewish male, you would be considered to be physically and mentally ready to take on the responsibility of public ministry. You had to be 30 to be a rabbi. And you had to be 30 before Jewish authorities would even consider you to be an authentic teacher. So the time was right for Jesus to move out in ministry. And so he finds John and tells him to baptize him. And that would be a head-scratching request for John because in his mind, it should be Jesus baptizing him and not the other way around. Remember, John said, listen, I baptize with water, but he who's coming after me, I'm not even worthy to tie up his shoes. Uh, he's going to baptize you with fire and the Holy Spirit. But Jesus tells John in so many ways, I get your logic, man. I get it. It does not make human sense, but it makes all kinds of kingdom sense. Verse 15, permit it to be so now, for thus it is written for us to fulfill all righteousness. Jesus is telling John that what they are about to do lines up with God's plan for salvation. They are about to activate his ministry. They're about to initiate the means through which the acceptance of God's justifying grace can be publicly acknowledged. And they're going to validate Jesus as Messiah and John as a prophetic witness. Fulfill all righteousness. This act of obedience, conforming to the will of God, is going to change the world. That's what Jesus meant when he said, fulfill all righteousness. Do what is good in the sight of God. Paul put it this way in 2 Corinthians 5, 21, when he said, For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Jesus is activating his earthly ministry, and the first thing he does is to put himself in the place of a sinner and get in line to do what sinners should do when they have confessed their sin and accepted salvation. Jesus was saying, let me show you, fellas, this is how you do it. This is what a public declaration of one's intent to seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. This is what it looks like. Jesus is being initiated into God's salvation protection plan, SPP. And we know 
that God was happy about that because Matthew 3, 16 and 17 puts it this way. When he had been baptized, Jesus came up immediately from the water and behold, the heavens were open to him and he saw the spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting upon him. And suddenly a voice came from heaven saying, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. My beloved son in whom I am well pleased. So I'm told that a better translation of that phrase from Hebrew to English as opposed to Hebrew to Greek to English would be that this is the son I love in you, I think is good. God's telling Jesus, I think there's good in you. I am proud of you. Now go become what I say that you are. Jesus had yet to perform a miracle. The water uh, at the wedding in Cana in Galilee was still water. The lame man at Bethesda was still lame. The woman with the issue of blood was still bleeding. Uh, Bartimaeus was still blind. God was calling out the good that Jesus would do before he actually went and did it. In his book, Life of the Beloved, uh, Henry Nouwen says that, that God is actually telling Jesus to go and become the good that's in him. Go and become it. Become what I say you already are. What a powerful message for us today. During this season of epiphany, we are called to be living proof to become what God already says that we are. In Jesus Christ, we have been declared free from the law of sin and death. We are blessed and not cursed. We have the mind of Jesus Christ. We have peace that surpasses all understanding. We are the righteousness of God. We're the head and never the tail. We are above and never beneath. We have been redeemed and restored and renewed and revived. We are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. We have been called out of darkness and into his marvelous light. That's who we are. Our job on this side of eternity is to live out what God has already declared about us, to become the living proof of the righteousness of God. In you, church family, God thinks is good. God thinks there's good in you. So how is your good doing? How's it doing? Have you gotten any better at being the good God sees in you? Jesus told John to permit it to be so now. Permit it to be so now. Are you living a Jesus now life? Live in me now. Jesus, reign over me now, Jesus, intercede for me now, Jesus, build in me now, Jesus. Jesus Christ put himself in the place of a sinner. He got in line to play the role of a sinner, to do what sinners do when they confess their sin and accept salvation. This is our opportunity today. You've been activated. You've been initiated. You've been validated. Now, in obedience, go and become everything God already says that you are. In the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. What a powerful and transformative word that is for us to go and become what God already says that we are. And God doesn't have any bad things to say about his children. Can we pray for you? We'd love to pray for you and your family. If you have a prayer request, please put it in writing. Send it to us at AUMC at ashfordumc.org. Or you know what? If you put your phone number on there, we'll give you a call and pray for you over the phone. Thank you for your continued generosity as we roll into 20 and 23. Your generosity means so much to this church family and our ministry. If you'd like to share a gift, you can do so. Just go to our website at askforumc.org. You can click the give button in the upper right. You can text to give by texting my Ashford and the dollar sign to 73256. Multiple other ways to give as well. And they are right there on your screen. 
Lord, I thank you for your word that has gone forth. I thank you, Lord, that your word never returns void. I pray that those that heard it will believe it, receive it, be changed by it, that they'll become the living proof, Lord, you've called all of us to be. Bless the gifts and the givers. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, thank you so much for being with us today for a virtual worship service. You're welcome to join us in our sanctuary. We're here every Sunday morning at 11 o'clock. We're 2201 South Derry Ashford Road on the west side of Houston. We'd love to worship with you and your family and bring your children. I say it every week because it's true. We have an outstanding children's ministry. Our Kids Zone volunteers are standing by to minister to your children, to teach your children the Word of God on their level, ages six weeks to 12 years of age. Bring your family, come and worship with us. Well, I send you forth each and every week with three questions. I provide the questions, you know the answers. Who's the head of this church? Jesus Christ. Who is the church? We are the church. And what are we as the church called to do? We are called to serve and be the living proof of the power and the presence of God in us. See you next time.